It's very interesting. Um, so th there's, a, there's a person who's left a comment here called the man with no name, 386. Don't call me a number. Uh, you seem unhappy that Farage gets so much attention, what, uh, which makes it all the more odd. You can't see your own hypocrisy. How many videos on Farage this last two weeks? Double figures, I imagine. Well, I don't know. I haven't looked. The media coverage, uh, the media cover him so much because it gets some clicks. Same reason you do, I suspect. No. The same reason I, I, I cover Farage for seven reasons, and I'm very much aware of why I do it. First of all, I think Farage is more than one issue. Number one, I think as a person, I imagine he's fairly affable and pleasant. And as a political leader, I think his views are repugnant. Uh, as a performer, I think he is extraordinary. Extraordinary not because he's particularly very good, but because he's the best there is. And <laughs> that, that rather low bar is depressing, frankly. He has managed to... Uh, understand how to communicate about one main subject. That's it. But he does it very well. And for that, I think one should keep him in sight because he's better than almost anyone else. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg is a very good second, but he's actually quite a long way down from Nigel Farage. And there is nobody to compare with either of them. And every so often you will hear that I say, oh, wow, uh, Robert Jenrick did a speech without notes. How spectacular. And he was very good. Yeah, well, you know, just one speech. It's how David Cameron captured the beating heart of the Conservative Party by doing this very long speech without any notes. And there used to be there used to be giants of oratory in the House of Commons. Most of them were on the left. You had a few on the right, but not in, not frankly, in living memory. Thatcher learned how to do it. There were very few, there were very few members of her um, cabinet who came anywhere close to her ability. Churchill, of course, was spectacular, but I never heard him, so I'm taking it on hearsay. I heard Michael Foote, who was remarkable. He had a, he commanded attention by splitting the second sentence in two. So if he had two sentences, he'd say the first sentence, he'd begin the second sentence, and then he'd stop in the middle of a in the middle of a phrase. And then continue. <laughs> and it was a brilliant device. Completely captivating. Tony Benn was remarkable. He had an ability to talk with complete conviction. And to remember so much. And he knew he was good. I think Ed Miliband sometimes has ability. His brother was better. And Tony Blair was extremely accomplished, but not at all as good as Foote or Ben. And Farage is competing with that. He's a, he's a pygmy in comparison to these giants. But that's all we've got. And that's why I'm in awe. I'm in awe of his technique. And as I say, I think, there are, I think there are seven reasons why Farage commands respect or commands interest. First of all, he is a charismatic persona. He's a charismatic individual. He has charisma. And I've talked a few times about this um, thing, charisma, it doesn't mean I like him. It doesn't mean I approve what he says. It means that he emanates a spirit which is immediately identifiable. 
He walks into the room and the room changes around him. He is a charismatic individual with a knack for engaging the public and the media. And his informal, often humorous style contrasts with the dullness, the reserved demeanour, the torpor of traditional British politicians. Secondly, he is a populist. Now, I'm going to make another film probably on the other channel, um, which, I, which at the moment some people have suggested should be called The Wise Professor or something. But uh, I've done a film about Assange. I would do a film about populism and particularly about its historical um, manifestation in ancient Rome, in ancient Greece, because it's relevant. Uh, and the populist often presents themselves as a political outsider, as does Farage, railing against the establishment and this populist appeal resonates with voters who feel disillusioned uh, by mainstream parties, mainstream politics, mainstream media, MSM. The third point is the fact that Farage has set himself one focus, one, one subject, and he does that very well. His unwavering focus on Brexit his opposition to the EU, it gives him a clear, distinct message. And his single-minded dedication has made him a defining figure in UK politics, particularly because of the Brexit referendum. And the follow-up to that, the failure of the Brexit establishment, the failure to get Brexit done in any meaningful way. And Notice what Farage has done in that situation. He's pulled back. And his supporters will say, well, we offered. We offered to help, and the Conservative Party didn't want us. So he went into GB News instead and carped from the sidelines. Actually, I understand he was offered a peerage, and he turned that down. The peerage was presumably a preamble to getting him into the government, into the cabinet. So it's a little disingenuous, isn't it? Put all the things together, join the dots. Farage was invited into the government after Brexit. Fact. And I, I would defy anyone to tell me that isn't the case, um, with proof that that absolutely wasn't the case. Farage was offered a peerage. Not to, get him, not to get him off the books, not to get him out of the way, but to get him into Parliament so that he could be of use. But instead he wanted to preen his feathers on GB News and hope his time comes. His time will not come. This is the, this is the Emperor's new clothes. But he wears them very very well. And of course, he's not afraid to show his bottom. Number four, he is media savvy in a way that many politicians are not. He's skilled in utilizing the media to his personal advantage and his appearances on TV, on radio and social media, carefully orchestrated to achieve maximum, to have maximum impact, to keep him in the public eye, often with provocative statements that ensure coverage. It's not possible to turn away when Farage is talking. Uh, and it may be much the same sort of stuff, but it's always engaging. The fifth point is that he is a figure of controversy and he polarizes opinion. His views and his rhetoric are controversial and they are challenging. This polarizing nature makes him a frequent topic of debate as well as the source of debate, further elevating his profile compared to more conventional politicians, more conventional speakers in public life. Farage not only engages with a subject, he creates the subject, and that subject is often him. The sixth point is his persistence and his resilience. And you can see that from his survival 
of the aeroplane crash. His survival after multiple electoral defeats. Other people would have walked away. He hasn't. He's remained a prominent figure despite failure after failure after failure. His persistence and his resilience, along with his founding of multiple political parties, um, have a failure, found another party. UKIP, Brexit, Reform UK. They showcase his adaptability, his determination. And that, again, you may not agree with him, but you have to take your hat off to him, don't you? He tries, he tries again. And the seventh point is his name factor. Farage. Somebody says, why can't you pronounce his name correctly? It's, uh, it, it rhymes with garage. Well, that's what I do. Um, and, uh, and I don't quite understand what is wrong. <laughs> um, Farage? Well, Farage rhymes with fridge, not with, not with garage. I, I, tell me, tell me I've got his name wrong. I will do what I can to adjust. But at the moment, uh, Farage, garage, that's it. Drive in, drive out, and pay for petrol. Farage is one of the few British politicians with significant name recognition outside the UK, partly because of his role in Brexit, partly because of his connection with figures like Donald Trump, partly because, you know, um, things often rise to the surface, don't they? It's uh, Farage is a floater, and he simply will not flush away. These factors combine to make Farage a distinctive and polarizing figure in British politics. When I was on uh, a program called The Circle and um, <laughs> and the, the production wanted to know because they, they had a camera in the in the um, bathroom and in order to provide privacy, the camera was either moved or silenced. And to move the camera required quite a lot of effort, I think. So they wanted to know if I was going to visit the loo, what I was going to do in there. And I thought, I'm not giving uh, medical details to production company. So I, I came up with a series of euphemisms. And a, a widicum was um, a standing operation. A Farage was a sitting operation, and Theresa May was a lot of hot air. And I thought, I thought to politicise the bathroom was an, en was an entertaining enterprise. And I was surprised that Farage emerged once or twice as an expression in the programme and has since been used once or twice as an expression uh, by other people. So I, 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 I hope that I've that I've managed to to uh, to coin a new expression. Uh, there's some Farage on the street. Uh, whoops a daisy! There goes a Farage. That's a dumper Farage. Um, and, uh, and 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 so Farage for me is as entertaining as Putin. Uh, Putin, I know also has got um, is 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 a moniker that has. Uh, that has moved that has changed in response to his personality um and it's important to reflect that the fact that i have made videos about him doesn't mean that i'm on some sort of clickbait crusade uh if i were i would certainly be focusing um my my video subjects on significantly more uh clickbaity subjects um, and uh, uh, I'm not on a clickbait crusade at all, and Farage certainly isn't my um, it, it, it isn't my means of um, of becoming rich. That, that's an absurdity. Um, Farage has never given money to anybody. I think Farage takes and takes, and does so very well. Um, I have a sneaking admiration for him. I still come back to the same thing that I said over the UKIP stuff, uh, that um, there's a lot of his rhetoric, which I don't think you can just toss off over a pint of beer. Uh, I think things are more important than a pub conversation. And 
Farrow spends too much time tossing stuff off and not enough time digesting and thinking about what he's saying and following through. Uh, in fact, if we go back to the bathroom uh, euphemisms, uh, Farage really is, a, as a person and as a political concept, Farage is more of a Mrs. May without the follow-up. A lot of heaving, and in the end there's not really much there. But he is still one of the most fascinating people in British politics, and I'm pleased he is in Parliament, but I would prefer to have seen him in the House of Lords, uh, where he could be held responsible, and where he's not constantly looking over his shoulder for the next election. Um, <clears throat> I think it would be more interesting to hear from his experience and to hear what he's actually got to say, rather than what he thinks will be popular.